Hey everybody, Mrs. Bodishan here. Today we are talking solutions. So we're gonna start by adding 25 grams of sugar to a beaker that is filled up with 200 milliliters of water. And we're gonna give that a stir. In other words, we're gonna agitate it so that it can thoroughly dissolve. This would be considered an unsaturated solution because we can still dissolve more of the sugar into the water. In other words, we can absorb more of our solute into the solvent. The solute in this case would be the sugar. The solvent in this case would be the water. And remember that water is your universal solvent. So you can see when I'm done stirring it up that it is completely 100% dissolved and still can dissolve more. So I've added several more scoops of sugar already, but I'm gonna go ahead and add one more scoop of 50 grams of sugar to our water. And notice I put it in a larger beaker just because I'm adding so much sugar, I needed a larger container. And once I stir it up, we have reached our saturation point. So this is now a saturated solution. You can see that no matter how much I mix it or agitate it, there is still granules of sugar left on the bottom because this solution can no longer absorb any more solute in the solvent. So from here, I'm gonna add quite a bit more sugar as you can see, and I'm gonna go ahead and stir it in. Now I know this sugar will not dissolve. We are gonna be creating a super saturated solution by applying heat to this so that we can get all of that sugar to dissolve in the water. In other words, all of the solute will be able to have a higher solubility because we are increasing the temperature of our solution. So we're gonna do that by putting it on a hot plate and turning it up. And we're gonna slowly see that it's gonna dissolve over time as the temperature increases, solubility increases, and more of that sugar, that solute, will dissolve in our solvent. I'm gonna go ahead and make rock candy with this today. And um, this is a great example of what happens after your solution cools down because once it's all the way up to a boil and you can see it's starting to boil here, uh, once I take it off the hot plate, you can see that when I give it a good stir, it will fully dissolve and it will be crystal clear as you can see here, um, which means all the solute has dissolved, a full solubility right there. Uh, and then I'm gonna take a stick and I'm gonna seed it with crystals of sugar all I did was I got the stick wet and I rolled it around in sugar crystals. Once your solution has cooled down for a while, you can place that stick inside your container. You can do this in a glass. I just did it in a flask, but you can do this at home too. And I just made it stay in the middle by putting some aluminum foil on the top. And you're gonna let this sit. I let this sit for a long time. This is when I initially put it in so you can see just the seed crystals there. But as the um, solute, the sugar, starts to fall out of solution, it will crystallize. Because now that we're decreasing our temperature, we're decreasing the solubility of that solution and it can no longer stay in the solution. So it will fall out and crystallize and go back to the bottom of the container. But because I put that stick in there, we're gonna have the crystallization occur on the stick itself and we can make that rock candy. I added a little bit of color to see if we could get any of it to stick on there as well. Um, and you can see over time, um, this is time-lapse, so you can see over time how the crystals are growing and getting larger and larger. Rock candy takes roughly a week. You can even leave it in there a little bit longer than that if you want to, but it does take a little bit of time in order to grow your crystals to a decent size. And you can see that once we take it out, the crystalline structure is really beautiful. And once it dries off, you can go ahead and eat it. Now, I challenged myself with making an even better rock candy solution, um, and I added a lot more sugar, and I added a lot more food coloring, and I can give you all the details. I'm gonna put that video link in the description below, and you can see the one that I made better was on the top with larger crystals and more color. So if you are interested in making rock candy at home, watch that video, and I'll give you the details of how to make a better rock candy. 